reading through the Bible in a year, March 29th, Exodus chapter 40, John 19, Proverbs 16, and Philippians chapter 3. Yahweh spoke to Moses, saying, On the first day of the first month you shall erect the tabernacle of the tent of meeting, and you shall put in it the ark of the testimony, and you shall screen the ark with a veil. You shall bring in the table and arrange it, and you shall bring in the lampstand and set up its lamp, its lamps. And you shall put the golden altar for incense before the ark of the testimony, and set up the screen for the door of the tabernacle. You shall set the altar of burnt offering before the door of the tabernacle of the tent of meeting, and place the basin between the tent of meeting and the altar, and put water in it. And you shall set up the court all around, and hang up the screen for the court, rather for the gate of the court. Then you shall take the anointing oil, and anoint the tabernacle and all that is in it, and consecrate it and all its furniture, so that it may become holy. You shall also anoint the altar of burnt offering and all its utensils. You shall consecrate the altar, so that the altar may become most holy. You shall also anoint the basin and its stand and consecrate it. Then you shall bring the uh, bring Aaron and his sons to the entrance of the tent of meeting, and shall wash them with water, and put on Aaron the holy garments, and you shall anoint him and consecrate him, so that he may serve me as priest. You shall bring his sons also and put coats on them, and anoint them as you anointed their father, that they may serve me as priests. And their anointing shall admit them to a perpetual priesthood throughout their generations. This Moses did according to all that Yahweh commanded him. So he did. In the first month and the second year, on the first day of the month, the tabernacle was erected. Moses erected the tabernacle. He laid its bases and set up its frames and put in its poles and raised up its pillars. He spread the tent over the tabernacle and put the covering of the tent over it as Yahweh had commanded Moses. He took the testimony and put it into the ark and put the poles on the ark and set the mercy seat above the ark. And he brought the ark into the tabernacle and set up the veil of the screen and screened the ark of the testimony as Yahweh had commanded Moses. He put the table in the tent of meeting on the north side of the tabernacle, outside the veil. He arranged the bread on it before Yahweh, as Yahweh had commanded Moses. He put the lampstand in the tent of meeting opposite the table on the south side of the tabernacle, and set up the lamps before Yahweh, as Yahweh had commanded Moses. He put the golden altar in the tent of meeting before the veil, and burned fragrant incense on it, as Yahweh had commanded Moses. He put in place the screen for the door of the tabernacle. He set the altar of burnt offering at the entrance of the uh, tabernacle of the tent of meeting and offered on it the burnt offering and the grain offering as Yahweh had commanded Moses. He set the basin in rather between the tent of meeting and the altar and put water in it for washing, with which Moses and Aaron and his sons washed their hands and their feet. When they went into the tent of meeting, and when they approached the altar, they washed as Yahweh had commanded Moses. And he erected the court around the tabernacle and the altar, and set up the screen of the gate of the court. So Moses finished the work. Then the cloud uh, covered the tent of meeting, and the glory of Yahweh filled the tabernacle. And Moses was not able to enter the tent of meeting, because the cloud settled on it. And the glory of Yahweh filled the tabernacle. Throughout all their journeys, whenever the cloud was taken up from over the tabernacle, the people of Israel would set out. But if the cloud was not taken up, then they did not set out until the day it was taken up. The cloud of, of Yahweh was on the tabernacle by day, and fire was in it by night, in the sight of all the house of Israel throughout all their journeys. Move on now to John 19. Then Pilate took Jesus and flogged him. And the soldiers twisted together a crown of thorns and put it on his head and arrayed him in a purple robe. They came up to him saying, 
Hail, King of the Jews! And they struck him with their hands. Pilate went out again and said to them, See, I am bringing him out to you, that you may know that I find no guilt in him. So Jesus came out wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe. And Pilate said to them, Behold the man! When the chief priests and the officers saw him, they cried out, Crucify him! Crucify him! Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and crucify him, for I find no guilt in him. The Jews answered him, We have a law, and according to that, he ought to die because he made himself the Son of God. Pilate heard this statement. He was even more afraid. And he entered his headquarters again and said to Jesus, Where are you from? But Jesus gave him no answer. So Pilate said to him, You will not speak to me? Do you not know that I have authority to release you and authority to crucify you? Jesus answered him, You would have no authority over me at all unless it had been given to you from above. Therefore, he who delivered me over to you has the greater sin. From then on, Pilate sought to release him, but the Jews cried out, If you release this man, you are not Caesar's friend. Everyone who makes himself a king opposes Caesar. So when Pilate heard these words, he brought Jesus out and sat down on the judgment seat at a place called the Stone Pavement and in, and, and, and in Aramaic, uh, Gabbatha. Now it was the day of preparation for the Passover, about the sixth hour, so noonish. And he said to the Jews, Behold your king. And they cried out, Away with him, which we talked about before. This means away with him from the earth, or let him be killed, or let him die. Away with him, crucify him. Pilate said to them, Shall I crucify your king? And the chief priests answered, This is important, We have no king but Caesar. So he delivered them over, or delivered him over to them to be crucified. So they took Jesus, and he went out, bearing his own cross, to the place called the place of a skull, which in Aramaic is called Golgotha. There they crucified him with two others, one on either side and Jesus between them. Pilate also wrote an inscription and put it on the cross, and it read, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. Any Jews read this inscription, for the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city, and it was written in Aramaic, in Latin, and in Greek. So the chief priests of the Jews said to Pilate, Do do not write the King of the Jews, but rather, this man said, I am the King of the Jews. Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written. When the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they took his garments and divided them into four parts, one part for each soldier, also his tunic. But the tunic was seamless, woven in one piece from top to bottom. So they said to one another, Let us not tear it, but cast lots for it, to see whose it shall be. This was to fill the scripture that says, They divided my garments among them, and for my clothing they cast lots. So the soldiers did these things. But standing by the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing nearby, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. And then he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour the disciple took her into his own home. This is fulfilling the fifth commandment that you should honor your father and mother. This is him taking care of her and her needs. After this, Jesus, knowing that that all was now finished, he said, to fulfill the scripture, I thirst. A jar of sour wine stood there, so they put a, a sponge full of the sour wine on a hyssop branch and held it to his mouth. When Jesus had received the sour wine, he said, It is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. Since it was the day of preparation, so that the bodies would not remain on the cross on the Sabbath, for that Sabbath was a high day, The Jews asked Pilate that their legs might be broken, and that they might be taken away. So the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first and of the other who had been crucified with him. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was already dead, they did, or rather, he was already dead, they did not break his legs. But one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear, and at once there came blood and water. He who saw it has borne witness, his testimony is true. And he knows that he is telling the truth, that you also may believe. For these things took place that the scripture might be fulfilled. Not one of his bones will be broken. 
And again, another scripture says, they will look on him whom they have pierced. After these things, Joseph of Arimathea, who was a disciple of Jesus, but secretly for fear of the Jews, asked Pilate that he might take away the body of Jesus, and Pilate gave him permission. So he came away and took his body. Rather, he came and took his body away. Nicodemus also, who earlier had come to Jesus by night, came bringing a mixture of myrrh and aloes, about 75 pounds in weight. So they took the body of Jesus and bound it in linen cloths with the spices, as is the burial custom for the Jews. Now, in the place where he was crucified, there we go. Now, in the place where he was crucified, there was a garden. And in the garden, a new tomb in which no one had yet been laid. So, because the Jewish day of preparation, because of the Jewish day of preparation, since the tomb was close at hand, they laid Jesus there. Move on now to Proverbs 16. The plans of the heart belong to a man, but the answer of the tongue is from Yahweh. All the ways of a man are pure in his own eyes, but Yahweh weighs the spirit. Commit your work to Yahweh, and your plans will be established. Yahweh has made everything for its purpose, even the wicked for the day of trouble. Everyone who is arrogant in heart is an abomination to Yahweh. Be assured, he will not go unpunished. By steadfast love and faithfulness, iniquity is atoned for, and by the fear of Yahweh, one turns away from evil. When a man's ways please Yahweh, he makes his enemies to be at peace with him. I restate that he makes even his enemies to be at peace with him. Better is a little with righteousness than great revenues with injustice. The heart of a man pleads his way, but Yahweh establishes his steps. An oracle is on the lips of a king. His mouth does not sin in judgment. A just balance and scales are Yahweh's. All the weights in the bag are his work. It is an abomination to kings to do evil, for the throne is established by righteousness. Righteous lips are the delight of a king, and he loves him who speaks what is right. A king's wrath is a messenger of death, and a wise man will appease it. In the light of a king's face there is life, and his favor is like the clouds that bring the spring rain. How much better to get wisdom than gold? To get understanding is to be chosen rather than silver. The highway of the upright turns aside from evil. Whoever guards his way preserves his life. Pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. It is better to be lowly of spirit with the poor than to divide the spoil with the proud. Whoever gives thought to the word will discover good, and blessed is he who trusts in Yahweh. The wise of heart is called discerning, and sweetness of speech increases persuasiveness. Good sense is like a fountain of life to him who has it, but the instruction of fools is folly. The heart of the wise makes his speech judicious and adds persuasiveness to his lips. Gracious words are like a honeycomb, sweetness to the soul and health to the body. There is a way that seems right to a man, but its end is the way of death, or the way to death. A worker's appetite works for him. His mouth urges him on. A worthless man plots evil, and his speech is like a scorching fire. A dishonest man spreads strife, and a whisperer separates close friends. 
A man of violence entices his neighbor and leads him in a way that is not good. Whoever winks his eyes plans dishonest things. He who purses his lips brings evil to pass. Gray hair is a crown of glory. It is gained in a righteous life. Whoever is slow to anger is better than the mighty. He who rules his spirit than he who takes a city. The lot is cast into the lap, but its every decision is from Yahweh. Including today in Philippians chapter 3. Paul continues, Finally, my brothers, rejoice in the Lord. To write the same things to you is no trouble to me and is safe for you. Look out for the dogs. Look out for the evildoers. Look out for those who mutilate the flesh. For we are the circumcision, who worship the, uh, by the Spirit of God and glory in Christ Jesus and put no confidence in the flesh, though I myself have reason for confidence in the flesh also. If anyone thinks he has reason for confidence in the flesh, I have more. Circumcised on the eighth day of the people of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of Hebrews, as to the law, a Pharisee, as to zeal, a persecutor of the church, as to righteousness under the law, blameless. But whatever gain I had, meaning in the flesh, in his, in his actions, trying to serve God to earn his salvation, I counted as loss for the sake of Christ. Indeed, I count everything as loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. For his sake I have suffered the loss of all things and count them as rubbish in order that I may gain Christ and be found in him. Not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but that which comes through faith in Christ, the righteousness from God that depends on faith, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and may share his sufferings, becoming like him in his death, that by any means possible, I may attain the resurrection from the dead. Not that I... Uh, have already obtained this or am already perfect. But I press on to make it my own because Christ Jesus had made, has made me his own. Brothers, I do not consider that I have made it my own. But one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead, I press on toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Let those who are mature think this way, and if in anything you think otherwise, God will, re God will reveal that also to you. Only let us hold true to what we have attained. Brothers, join in imitating me, and keep your eyes on those who walk according to the example you have in us. For many of whom I have often told you, and now tell you even with tears, Walk as enemies of the cross of Christ. Their end is destruction. Their God is their belly. And they glory in their shame, with minds set on earthly things. But our citizenship is in heaven, and from it we await a Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who will transform our lowly body to be like his glorious body by the power that enables him even to subject all things to himself. Therefore, my brothers, whom I love and long for, my joy and crown, stand firm thus in the Lord, my beloved. I know this is the first verse of the next section, but it really belongs to the older one. Sorry, to the, to the previous one from today, but that's fine. All right, and that is all the reading and all the notes for today. God willing, we'll be back tomorrow. Behold the word of the Lord.